it's uh, breaking daylight here on November 3rd and I got out here to where I was gonna hunt and found out that I couldn't get in the tree stand. Um, it was in the dark and uh, I just tried to get in but the way the cedar branches are set up I would have had to kind of push and pull and kind of swing myself off into the stand and I just wasn't willing to do that in the dark with a 20 25 pound pack on my back with all my camera gear and everything and 10 years ago I would have just done it without even giving it a second thought but I just it's just too dangerous and uh, my truck is that way uh, 450 yards as the crow flies which over the curves is probably at least 600 or more but I'm just gonna sit down here below the cedar trees and uh, right down that way the deer are jumping the fence and working their way south down there so that's I'm hoping to be able to potentially shoot one on the ground and I don't have any way really to set up a camera but we'll see how it goes we're gonna give it an hour hour and a half here and then I'm gonna go back down to where I saw those three bucks yesterday and there's a stand down there I, I need to find that stand and uh, put a pin on it so I can get in there in the dark I may hunt there this evening too so anyway let's uh, we're just kneeling on the ground here and if a deer comes by it's gonna be close <laughs> This gig is up. The buck is up there. He's got two does with him up there. And then this girl just come running right down through the hollow. I'm trying to get in a stand. I got in here, found the stand, but I really blew it up in here. Wow, what a fiasco of a morning. So, as I was coming up in here, I saw a buck and a couple of does, and I saw them before they saw me. Um, same as yesterday, like right where I'm standing here now, there was three bucks yesterday when I came up in here. I was going to try to find this stand and put a pin on it. Well, I saw this buck and does, and I was sitting there filming them, thinking, okay, I... I'm not going to be able to get by them. What are my options here? And then all of a sudden another doe just ran right up on me. And she ran like she was being chased by a buck. Um, and she came right up on me. And I, you know, the gig was up at that time. So she snorted and ran off. I never did see the buck that was chasing her. Although, as I started to move on up in here, uh, I did see another, probably a two-year-old, like a 100-inch, 110-inch buck and more does up in here so anyway i put a pin on the stand right there it's a huge oak tree and uh, there's no point in staying in here now after i blew it up like i did there was more does snorting by the time i uh actually got up in here so i'm gonna head back the truck is that way and uh that's the way i came in but there's not much point in getting in a stand right now. Uh, it's a pretty cool spot in here, and obviously the deer sure like it, so 
I have got to go through that. There's some, this is rough country. I'm gonna head down that way and uh, head back to the truck, get some breakfast, and uh, then come back out here in the afternoon. I'm in early. It's about two o'clock. And I'm in this big oak tree where I've been seeing all those bucks and does chasing the last two days. It's hot again and windy. Strong south wind, but it's really swirling. And uh, I decided to just spend the afternoon in here because there's no sense sitting in the camper when the deer are moving all day now. They're, the cameras on the scrapes have started to dry up. So there's quite a bit of chasing going on, November 3rd. And I'm way up here. I gotta take a range finder and check some of this stuff down here, but um, John said he hasn't hunted this stand for a couple years and it's pretty well grown up in front of it. And um, I don't have a way to cut shooting lanes with me, which I wish I did. I'm just not willing to reach out past the stand and break off those branches, but I. I I got one good spot right here that I can shoot through. So I should have come prepared to, to do more cutting when I get in these trees that haven't been hunted for a while. 75 degrees. That has hurt the movement, that's for sure. But uh, I still, I'm closing in on them, I feel like. So today, um, after I got back this morning, I uh, had a conference call for for some of my work that I had to do at 10 o'clock and then I went and uh, pulled a couple cards out of a couple cameras and uh, moved a cell camera and uh, now I'm back out here uh, ready to hunt for the afternoon so um, it's going to be hard sitting here in this heat but man there's a lot of deer in this area and I've seen four different bucks in this area that are three and a half years or older so we'll see how it goes I'll give you a look around here three everybody hit the like button the thumbs up for good luck for me one two three Quit it, man. Quit it. He's right at the base of my tree. 
is a three-year-old ten-pointer, not a giant, but it's a, it's a really nice buck, so I'm not going to complain. All right, I'm going to get down and have a look at him. He's licking the he's licking the blood off a leaf when the pot of gold is right here. I'm just sitting here waiting for John to come pick me up and this doe won't leave me alone. I do have a doe tag, but it's a little after shooting light. She's directly downwind of me. Right there is my buck. Right there is a possum. And right there is a doe. I feel like I'm in a Disney movie or something. I picked up the video camera when he was coming down the trail. I wasn't going to shoot him. and. And I see that he's a three and a half year old ten pointer. He's kind of busted up, and then all of a sudden I start thinking, shoot, they're calling for rain tomorrow, and there's been so little deer activity because it's been in the 70s every day. And I thought, you know what? I think it's time to punch my tag. And so um, I had to put the camera down, and uh, so I didn't get the actual shot on video. But uh, he was really close to the base of the tree, just you know 15 feet from the base of the tree and uh, when I shot him a spine shot him dropped him and had to put another arrow in him but um, anyway this is a representative Iowa deer and I'm happy with him I uh, had a really fun hunt here and I really appreciate John and uh, and the family um, his in-laws and so forth that have allowed me to hunt their property and uh, so I got a Tomorrow, we'll hang him up and tomorrow I'll, I'll quarter him up and uh, put him in a cooler and I got to get him home and then get on to Kansas and uh, you cannot take a deer's brain or spinal column into the state of Minnesota so I'll have to uh, you know get him cut up enough that I uh, that I can uh, get him in a cooler and uh, leave the brain and the spinal column here in Iowa but Anyway, thanks for following along, and we'll see you on the next vlog. Kansas coming up. Well, it's 6 o'clock in the morning here, and I thought it would take just a minute to answer a couple of questions that I know are going to come up as I've done this YouTube channel for a few years now. I, I always know that people are going to ask certain things, and so might as well answer them up front. And uh, I'm just getting my camper ready to go here and uh, washing dishes and getting it ready to travel. I've got to go get four trail cameras out of the woods after daylight. As soon as it hits daylight this morning, I'm going to go do that. And um, then I also got quite a bit of, you know, little things to do before I can hunt in Kansas. I got broken arrows in my quiver and so forth that I got to get uh, new broadheads on arrows and, and uh, everything like that. So, but I know that People are going to say, you know, you shot a three and a half year old 10 point buck when you've got all those big bucks around on these properties that I'm hunting. Um, you know, why would you hold out two or three more days? And that's a really good question. And I guess the best way to answer that is to think about it this way. A really big buck like the ones that are on camera and are, are on these properties they're really hard to kill when you got a whole season and to think that you're going to shoot one in a week is pretty unrealistic so i mean it could happen it'd just be phenomenal if it did but the reality is it's just probably not and 
it just doesn't make sense when you got a pretty limited time to hunt to try to target a specific buck. You know, it's been tough here the four days that I've been here because the weather's been hot. It's been in the 70s every day. The, the bucks aren't moving much. I'm hunting on a, you know, on a timeline. And so I just decided when that deer came by, uh, and they're predicting rain for today, for the fifth day, and which would leave me two days of, uh, of hunting. And I just thought, you know what, this is a, this is a good buck that uh, anybody would be happy with. It's the kind of buck that I've killed for years and years on public land. And I literally made my living and literally wrote the book on do-it-yourself public land, traveling to other states to hunt. And this is the kind of a buck that everybody was is happy with when they hunt public land in a state far from home. As you know, the 120 to 140 inch 8 and 10 pointers, that's... I'm. You know, I'm not trying to make excuses or anything. I shot a nice buck, so I'm happy with it. And uh, it's good to be taken to meet home and uh, have a rack that I can put on, on in the garage along with a whole bunch of others that I got that are about the same size over the years. And I'm excited to go on to Kansas. And uh, I'm going to talk to you more about just kind of life changes that brought on what I'm doing and why... I've started to lose my passion for, I guess, quote unquote, doing it the hard way. Um, all those years of public land hunting and hoofing a stand back into areas where most people won't go and the things that I've done over the years and uh, just some life changes that have happened that have caused me to sort of rethink um, the way I'm doing these hunts. And so I'll talk about that more in a future video. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to get out there, get these cameras, um, hook up this camper, and uh, I'm going to put the meat, i, I got to quarter this deer up, and uh, put the meat in a cooler, and then I've either got to find a place to park this trailer and run that meat home, at, which is um, six hours each way, 12 hours of driving to get the meat home, or... Uh, find a place to get it in a freezer while I hunt in Kansas. So that's one of my challenges for today. Anyway, thanks for watching this vlog. And the next vlog that you see will be the Kansas vlog. I'll start that when I arrive in Kansas, uh, probably tomorrow morning. <laughs>